Thanks so much, Vanya. Um, I'm going to talk about geography today. Uh, my name is Robert Cheatham. I'm with Avencia. We, um, uh, we specialize in trying to change the world using geography. Uh, the story I'm going to tell today sort of starts with my wife and I looking for a house. We were really frustrated with the process. It was a, um, uh, a real estate agent uh, know a whole lot, but they only know it a, a whole lot about a few neighborhoods. Uh, it was a, a, a fairly frustrating process. So this is a story about that. Uh, we had a lot of preconceived notions. We knew a few uh, uh, neighborhoods where we thought we might be interested, but we really wanted to open that up and uh, uh, break down those preconceived notions, but didn't really have tools to do so. Some of the things we were really interested in were we wanted to be, live close to Center City, we wanted to uh, have a grocery store nearby, we wanted some restaurants, a library, be near a park. We wanted to be biking distance to fencing. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Obviously many of you don't, but you might want to be close to childcare, uh, near, uh, uh, you want to have high school rankings nearby, you want to have a farmer's market, Philly car share, public transit. So. Imagine if you could take all of these factors that you're really interested in, weight all of them, what's important to you, what's not important to you, and smash all of that together and come up with a hotspot map that lights up those areas that best satisfy your desires. Yours, which might be different from mine, hopefully. This is not a new idea. A lot of these uh, uh, ideas actually all came out of Philadelphia, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where they came from. Uh, Ian McCarg was a gentleman who was a professor. He's the chair of landscape architecture and regional planning at the University of Pennsylvania. 1969, he wrote a terrific book called Design with Nature. You should all go out and buy it. It's back in reprint. Design with Nature, in this book, amongst several other concepts, he talks about taking acetate maps, drawing acetate maps on transparent sheets and, and crashing these together and using those as a way to identify the best sites for doing particular things. Fast forward to the 1990s, Dana Tomlin, another professor at the University of Pennsylvania here in Philadelphia, he develops a language for computation to combine maps in interesting ways called map algebra. He's also a really great teacher. If you ever have a chance to take a class from Dana, do it. He's outstanding. So uh, he was sort of pre-open source. He gave away all the algorithms he developed. This is in the 1980s. He, uh, 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 gives all these out to commercial companies, it ends up in all the software. So software like this that we use to do this kind of thing on the desktop, like ArcGIS, some of you may have used this, uh, ends up having all of his algorithms inside it. So I'm losing my place here. So uh, we wanted to do this on the web. A couple of months ago, it's been a, a two year project. A couple of months ago we launched this, we've got our first client down in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, and the product's called Decision Tree. Uh, with decision tree, you can take your particular uh, 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 decision factors, take those slider bars on the left-hand side, move those left or right uh, uh, to weight those particular decision factors. And uh, for Asheville, they're concerned with economic development and citing businesses. So uh, entrepreneurs are really their target. And what comes out is a hotspot map. Comes out uh, 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 really, really fast. Uh, runs well on the web. And um, we're pretty excited about it. It has some standard sort of web mapping type things. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can adjust your, uh, uh, your color palettes, you can uh, adjust your translucency and so on. Um, let's see here. And we've wired this up to uh, demographics and business activity reports and so on. So once you find a parcel you're interested in, you can, you can click on that and pull up some reports for it. Now for a house or something like that, you might imagine uh, 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 school reports or school scores and so on. So how can this be applied? Not quite good on the transition there. How can this be applied? Uh, we're getting a lot of interest from people interested in election campaigns, being able to optimize the canvassing of neighborhoods. Uh, how does all of this work? Uh, we spread out, we break up the city into tens of thousands of cells. We apply numeric values to each one of those cells and we smash all those together into an output map. So election campaigns, we're doing this with conservation and natural resources, prioritizing open space planning, uh, uh, real estate, and of course, finding apartments and finding your house and so on. A couple of examples, uh, the, f uh, the first up in the upper left hand corner is uh, by Bradley Breuer, it's a, a um, childhood lead poisoning risk analysis study, uh, uh, again lighting up the areas that are the highest risk. On the lower right hand corner is conservation and open space planning, a uh, conservation resource priorities map for southeast Pennsylvania. 
want to acknowledge all the great folks that I, I work with at Avencia, very smart and terrific people. Uh, the city of Philadelphia, who supported an early prototype for this, and of all places, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, don't ask. They provided us with a seed grant to do the R&D work. Thanks very much for your time. <laughs>